Well, it is Monday and I am back in the office. I was in Delaware County, Pennsylvania this morning representing a client at a preliminary hearing. And now I'm back in the office in Morristown, New Jersey to see some clients in the afternoon session. At the preliminary hearing this morning in Delaware County, we had an opportunity to accept a plea offer from the prosecution. But the after looking at the case and talking to the client, we made the decision to move forward with the preliminary hearing. And it was the right decision. Now, the case was held for trial, and I expected it to be held for trial. But taking the plea offer at the preliminary hearing was not the right decision, and simply because the client didn't do it. And I can't tell you how many clients have come to me and said, well, I didn't do this, but I want to plead anyway. And as an attorney, ethically, I can't advise someone to accept the plea offer and have them come before the court and take an oath and uh, an oath to tell the truth and then say something that didn't happen in open court. People don't understand that, that a guilty plea at any level, whether it be you're pleading guilty at the preliminary hearing level to a lesser charge, or you're going up to trial and entering the plea because of some other, what appears to be a very favorable deal. If you didn't do it, you can't accept the plea offer. Now, in this particular case, the prosecution's evidence was extremely weak, and we brought that out at the preliminary hearing. Now, the case was held for trial, but it's important to understand that at a preliminary hearing, as I've written in previous blogs and videos and in my books, the evidentiary burden of proof is prima facie. So the Commonwealth, the prosecutor, does not have to establish guilt beyond a reasonable doubt, which is the burden of proof at any criminal trial. The prosecution in a case, in, in any case in Pennsylvania, the preliminary hearing level has to establish this prima facie level of proof. Which, which is simply, it's more probable than not that a crime occurred and the person sitting in the courtroom charged is the person who did that. And that's much less than guilty on a reasonable doubt. Now, in this particular case, I think that we have very, very good evidence, very, very strong defense case. And I believe, I firmly believe that our client will be acquitted at the trial court level, the Court of Common Pleas in Pennsylvania. But if you have questions, 215-755-9000 in Pennsylvania, 856-793-7429 in New Jersey, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, website, gambonelaw.com. As always, a tremendous resource for you and your family. All of my books, my blogs, my videos are available there in one convenient format. Preliminary hearings, we've done a lot of articles on them. Um, I've written a lot about them because they're so important with regards to what happens. New Jersey doesn't have preliminary hearings, but they do have probable cause hearings during detention hearings. And, and these are important hearings to not underestimate the power of them. And I frequently have to counsel clients that when you're being detained in New Jersey, we're, we're not in most situations going to concede probable cause, even though the judge will ask us to do so in most situations. We're not going to do that because it's our first opportunity to have charges dismissed or perhaps even downgraded at that level. But again, if you have questions, 215 755 9000 in Pennsylvania, 856 793 7429 in New Jersey, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Have a great Monday, and I'll talk to you all very soon.